What is going on guys? We are going to talk about why Tesla is in deep trouble and this is completely different from my video on Sunday about the Rivian R2 that's going to be revealed tomorrow. This is going to be just Tesla fundamentals and why they are so awful that I cannot believe anybody is holding this still. But um, let's get right to it. Now the Tesla videos are always interesting because they really rile up, you know, all these uh, the permables. The other day in my Rivian video, I had all these people telling me I had no idea what I was talking about. They get really hostile. They're, they're a feisty little group. But the point remains, today, Adam Jonas, who's probably Tesla's biggest fanboy over the last decade at Morgan Stanley, put out this new research report where he says, Tesla's EPS is going sub $1 this year, and he's cutting his price target to $320. Now, before we get into this, I'd like to remind you that a couple weeks back, Adam Jonas put out another research note where he said, you know, Tesla's current business isn't worth much, but all the things that don't exist, as in robo taxis, dojo, uh, the Optimus bot, all the other little things that Tesla makes up are worth like $250, $260 a share, and the rest of Tesla's worth like sub $100. Now, I'm with you. I believe the rest of Tesla is worth sub $100. And I believe that the moonshots or whatever you want to call them here are probably worth like 10, 15 bucks because they're just ideas. I mean, every, every company has ideas, but they're not valued at anything. Like take Amazon, my favorite company. Their Zooks is further ahead than Tesla at robo taxis. Uh, if you don't believe me, then why does Amazon have a purpose driven car that can you know be a robo taxi right now and that car has a license in foster city california to take people around tesla doesn't have that tesla doesn't have an autonomous car amazon is further along there there are countless other companies that are further along there uh optimus bot have you seen how slow that thing moves it like joe biden would beat it in a foot race if they went head to head it's an unbelievably slow bot. That's what's going to replace all these people working in factories one day. Maybe, maybe if they can get up to speed. But last I saw, Optimus Bot was being controlled by a guy uh, with a remote control. You know, you could see him on the side of the video. So that's vaporware too. Uh, all the other things, Dojo, that's nothing material at this point. Uh, semi truck, Roadster, all these things do not exist and. People that are investing for all these things that exist, it, it's it's just, it's comical because every mega cap is investing billions a year in CapEx and R&D focused on all these future things. Like you think Tesla, have you seen Tesla's R&D budget? It's a joke to think they're going to go head to head with someone like Amazon who is investing. Amazon invests almost as much in R&D as Tesla does in revenue. Do you know that? I mean, it's comical what Tesla does. Now... With that out of the way, let's get right into this report here where he lowers his price target to $320 with EPS sub a dollar. Now, let, let's talk about that for a second. Car makers trade five, six, seven times earnings. I mean, you have GM, you have Ford, you have all these car makers and they trade at sub 10 times earnings. Now, Tesla, because it's Tesla and it's all these things besides a car company apparently, is worth 300 times earnings. Now, again, we look at the mega caps, uh, something like Amazon is trading at like, I don't know, 36 times next year's earnings. And Amazon was always the expensive one of the mega caps, right? Uh, Google in the 20s, Apple, low 20s uh, on an earnings multiple. Um, all these mega caps are trading 20, 25, 30 times earnings, but Tesla on meddling sales is worth 300 times earnings? Who, who's Adam Jonas kidding? I mean, like, yes, in 2015, this guy had to make up stuff. If you remember his, he, remember that one report he put out where he said Tesla's worth under 10 bucks or, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, he was kind of Elon's guy to keep the pump going so Elon could do offering after offering uh, over the past decade. But right now, I mean, this is a really bad look. Now, you look at like even someone like Gary Black on Twitter, right? And he's like Tesla's biggest bull. Like I, I, I always troll this guy. If you look over here, this guy is saying 
where's the growth that justifies a 24 price to earnings ratio of 67 X, right? Uh, first quarter volume growth up 1% year over year. That's not a growth company, 1% year over year. Uh, total year volume growth, 11%. That's not gonna happen. It's not, they're not gonna hit 11%. And this is funny here because Blaine is actually someone I know, he's in our chat below. And Blaine said, Gary, out here every day, acutely articulating the bear case on Tesla while Max Long. Why, Gary? Read what you yourself have been writing since the Twitter offer. Now, I mean, Gary Black, I, this guy, I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he, he's like this Tesla permable, and every day he's like questioning, why am I long this company? Why am I long this company? And everything is telling you to sell. And the reason the stock doesn't go down is because, look, you gotta have more sellers than buyers. Right, that's it's simple, that's how stocks work. The problem with Tesla is everybody's taking shares, they're tucking them away for their kids for 20 years from now. Uh, the float is very tight. There's Elon, there's a few family offices that deal with him, there's a couple funds. You know, you have Bailey Gifford, you have ARK Invest, you have Ron Barron. Like, it, it's a very, very small float, and they can game the stock, but at this point, they can't even game it. They can't even game it because there's so much selling from like real institutions that want nothing to do with the stock. And again, as I've said many times, uh, you can easily look up a list of the most popular names with hedge funds. Tesla's not even in the top 50, meaning very few have it as a top 10 position. This is a retail-driven stock. It's held by a bunch of retail investors who really don't know what they're talking about. I mean, just look at the investors talking about this stock. You have Tesla Boomer Mama. She's like the leader of the pack. She runs an immigration company. She's not exactly like a financial, uh, a market expert or anything. You know, you don't want to talk to her about charts and trend lines, whatever. She can't answer any of those questions. She she runs an immigration business. Then you have uh, guys like Gary Black. The guy's headquarters is in a WeWork office. Do you see him on CNBC? I have never, I've been around this business a long time. I don't know one fund manager that runs a fund out of a WeWork. And then you have Gary complaining, why do I only have $8 million in assets under management? You know, I need to charge for my Twitter subscription, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like usually fund managers have a nice office. They, uh, clients can come in. They don't use a uh, shared working space. That's just not how it works. Now, with that out of the way, let's look at some of these notes in here. So. Tesla's products relatively age. While Tesla may be the most technologically advanced car company in the world, it isn't, its product lineup may be the oldest of any major OEM with nearly all its lineup launched prior to COVID. Now, that's an important point because the Model 3 came out in 2015 and now we have the Highland or whatever it's called and all they did was they changed the lights. That's it, they didn't really do anything material. Uh, the Model X and the Model S, they're pretty much the same chassis they've been using for over a decade. I mean, the Model S came out in 2012. Yeah, they've given it a couple facelifts, but it's the same chassis. Every luxury brand, okay, builds new cars. To look at Mercedes, right? They had one S class from like 07 to 2013, then another one from like 2014 to like 2019, and then the new S class came out and it's been out the last couple of years. Rich people buying the S and the X don't want to have the same chassis as somebody who's got a $20,000 2012 Model S. They just, they don't. And so Tesla had all these rich people engaged for the longest time. And now look at Model S and X sales. They're dead. They're dead. Like they, they, they don't even sell that many units. Meanwhile, all these other luxury brands are building these cars uh, that might not be as quick, right? Zero to 60 time is really not that important to that many people. Like te Tesla always runs with zero to 60 time. Uh, you know, I have a lot of great cars. You can see the other videos on my tube. I don't care. Most people that like speed don't even care about zero to 60. They care about the noise of the car, the handling, the suspension. They care about a lot of things that Tesla doesn't offer. Uh, accelerating from zero to 60, just it's it's pointless. I mean, you, you burn out your tires. These tires, I don't know what they cost. On, on, on my truck, they're $4,400 for a set every four or 5,000 miles. I'm, I'm not trying to floor it and uh, just rip through them every a uh, couple months. Now, when Tesla is in trouble, what I was saying in the video on Sunday is, look, tomorrow the R2 is gonna be revealed from Rivian. That R2 isn't gonna come out for two years. So no, it's not gonna hit Tesla in the next two years, but here's the thing. 
By the time it comes out, you're going to have Tesla's number one car facing real competition from a viable competitor. That's, that's just reality. And, and Tesla's already struggling to move these units. What's going to happen when there's a better competitor? So Tesla needs to remodel some of these cars ASAP if they want to compete. Now, uh, China, as we saw the last few days, is their most important market and they're struggling over there. And the bulls make up all these excuses about the Chinese holiday and whatnot and what caused us off. That isn't the issue. The Chinese car makers have better cars than Tesla. I mean, I've looked at some of these online. They're amazing, amazing machines. I personally would never buy one because they're probably terrible, but I mean, a Tesla's a terrible car too. So that's, that's not really, I mean, you know, they're both terrible cars. And what you're seeing is stuff like hybrids. Hybrids are coming really quickly. Everyone's going with hybrids. Look, hybrids for most people are the perfect balance, right? You have an electric car in the city when you don't want, want to spend gas. And then you have a gas powered car when you want to go for a long trip. That's the perfect blend. EVs are just overkill. Um, they're great in the city, but you know what? If you have to go stop at a Tesla charging station, you got to wait in line. You got to pay basically 30 plus dollars to charge your car all the way. You're basically filling gas. You're, you're filling gas and you're, you're waiting in line for an hour to do it. That's, that's a bit ridiculous, right? I mean, we've had gas stations for the last 100 plus years. You pull in three, four minutes out the door. So if you're on a road trip, nobody's got time to go charge their Tesla multiple times along the way. Now, here they come down here where they talk about Tesla's fiscal year free cash flow is going to be sub 100 million this year. Now, look, believe me, nobody knows about free cash flow going negative more than me with Amazon. Uh, Amazon did it for two years. And Amazon was building out a logistics network that cost fortunes. They were picking up warehouses, they were you know, building up AWS, they were doing all kinds of stuff that was gonna lead to material revenue down the line. Tesla's building out, I, I, I don't know what, you know, like the demand just isn't there. Their sales are tapering off. It, what's all this, what are all these factories for when your sales are up 1%? That's kind of pointless, you know? For Q1, I mean, it, 1% is the estimate. What, what if sales go negative in Q1? That, that would be pathetic. What are, you, what are you building all this stuff for? So um, coming down here, you know, of course, Morgan Stanley still, permable mode. They're going from 86 million of free cash flow this year, all the way up to 10.7 billion in 2026. Now, 30 times free cash flow is a pretty steep multiple, I would say. Uh, Amazon, in my book, is worth $3 trillion today on the basis that it's going to do 100 billion free cash flow by 26, right? So Amazon's gonna do 10 times the free cash flow what Tesla's gonna do in 2026. It's probably worth 3 trillion. That would make Tesla worth probably like three, 350 uh, billion, right? Which is a lot lower than we are today at like 550 billion. So. Um, realistically, on this year's number, well, we won't judge Tesla on this year's number because this year's number is an investment cycle. But on next year's number, four point seven billion of free cash flow. I mean, these these are puny numbers. I mean, you, you just look at what Amazon just did Q four right now that just passed. Amazon did almost thirty billion of free cash flow in one quarter, twenty nine billion, I believe. I mean. We're, we're talking 4.7 billion next year for the whole year for the world's most innovative company, according to Bulls. That's kind of pathetic. And in 2026, only 10. I mean, if Amazon's doing 100 billion by 2026, where is Tesla going to overtake them? In 2029? In 2037? I mean, I, I, I don't know, but it's nowhere close. And what people are investing in today is years out and may never happen. It literally may never happen. And the bigger worry for Tesla investors is Elon's unhinged right now. I mean, he's on Twitter. Uh, I mean, he, he, he's basically a Republican right now, you know, dumping on Democrats every single day, which is funny because basically like liberal voters were your early adopters of Teslas, right? Those were like your early, you know, the, that was the crowd buying Teslas early. And now Elon is dumping on them daily. He's meeting with Trump this past week. Um, he might fund him now. That will upset a lot of people. And again, it goes back to that thing in the 90s with Michael Jordan when he was talking about, you know, Republicans buy shoes too and he doesn't get involved in politics. 
Elon's getting involved in politics and his sales are already struggling. It's not like he's got one of these products where, like if this was Amazon and Jeff Bezos made a political statement, right? People probably wouldn't stop using Amazon because that's a necessity. But uh, Tesla's not, and he's, he's really burning a lot of bridges right now, which, I, I don't know, it's got to be upsetting to the board. We'll see in the next couple quarters what it's going to do for numbers, but I, I guarantee it's not a good thing for numbers. Um, right here, Morgan Stanley cut unit volume, 2 million units for their 2024 model, right? And that's where they're coming up with the just over 11% growth this year. That is uh, a pretty big cut, you know, to go under 2 million units. Uh, a lot of people were looking for 2 million units. Remember, the Tesla Bulls are looking for 30 million units or whatever, 20 million, 20 million units by 2030. That is absolutely not happening. That is absolutely not happening. Basically, every person that wants a Tesla already has one, and the rest of the society just doesn't care, okay? Um, right here, auto gross margins were reduced 2%, which a massive, I mean, that's like a 15% reduction from 13.2 to 11.4. Uh, lower volume, more price cuts. Uh, gap operating margins reduced to 3.7% and going as low as 2.2%. Whoa, okay? And, um, you know, like I said, free cash flow cut to 86 million from a billion. So massive, massive price cut. Um, and right here, they're talking about 10 billion in CapEx, okay? Overall, I mean, you can look through here, the EBITDA numbers, I mean, Tesla's trading at disgusting, disgusting multiples. If, if this stock was $50, it would still be expensive. Um, why doesn't the stock go there today? It's really hard to take this thing down. I mean, it's really hard. Every dip is bought. Look at today, it hit like 173, they bought it up to 180, then they ended at 176. I mean, there are so many people, and, and here's the thing, Elon gained this stock for the longest time. And again, you can gain any stock. If you have the right people uh, helping you, you know, family offices, you have calls being bought, you have, you know, big players. I mean, when Elon had that little tranche that he had where he got the 50 billion that's about to be reversed right now in Delaware, he completely gained the stock because the stock hit every single level to where he executed that tranche and got every single one. And then the stock is down 60% since in 2021 and it's made, it's been lifeless since. The stock has no pulse, has no pulse. Why? Because he literally hit every target and now he doesn't care. He doesn't care. So uh, good for him. He completely worked over all these Tesla bag holders that are on here crying in the videos. And, uh, you know, I, I would do the same thing if I was him. You have all this like, liquidity waiting for you, right? All this, all these investors that really don't know what they're doing and they just buy every single day. Good for him, he dumped all over them. That was that was a really prudent move on his part. Um, anyways, so that's my take on all this. Let's see how good this R2 is tomorrow. I really think two years out, it's gonna be a major issue for Tesla as these start being delivered. Um, the Model Y is a frumpy little car, you know? Uh, it's not really something that you know, anyone will cry about if there's a better competitor. So I'm really curious to see what we get tomorrow from Rivian. And Tesla just keeps going down, you know. Call it what you will. If the stock's down, what, 15% uh, from my video on Sunday? I don't know. Maybe I sparked it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it was really just terrible Tesla numbers, but it just happened to be really great timing. Um... We'll see what happens going forward, but this is a really broken stock. You can look at it on every time frame. I'm not gonna waste your time looking at charts in this video. This is a fundamental video. Uh, Tesla remains probably the most egregiously overpriced stock I've ever seen in my life. Uh, even Nvidia going up 100% in a month. That, that has real earnings. Like that has real, real earnings. So that's, that's not an expensive stock and their earnings are fantastic. I mean. It's a little expensive, but it's not like egregious like Tesla where it's trading at, you know, well over 200 times current year estimates. So thanks again for watching. Uh, I have a bunch of other Tesla videos in my library. I hope you guys check them out. And I look forward to all the vicious comments that I'm about to get from the Tesla bulls that are coming. I, I will answer every single one of them and I hope to hear from you guys.